time, this is Simon, and this video covers a few different ideas of audio data bending. Remember, data bending is opening up a file with a software that's not designed to edit that file. In previous videos, we've opened up files with Audacity, Hexfiend, and Pure Data. In this video, I just want to blast through a few more different ideas. So here I have a couple of familiar looking files. Let's start by working with the MP3. One thing I can do that's way easier than anything we've done so far is just duplicate this. Change the extension to be a TXT file. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. I'm going to say yes, I am. And then it's ready to be opened with a text editor. On Mac, this defaults to text edit. On Windows, I don't know anymore. It used to be WordPad. So I'm going to double click. Now look at this. At the top here, this looks very organized. This is actually the header. We can see all sorts of different information about the sample rate and things like that. If I scroll down, however, now here's all a bunch of gibberish. This is the program's attempt to interpret this MP3 compressed audio information as text. So scroll down, maybe around here, and let's add a percent sign here. Command S, close it. Now let's name this back to MP3. Now let's see what we got. Welcome to the future. There's a little hiccup in there. Welcome to the future. Okay. That seems to me an invitation to do a little bit more. Scroll down past the header. Number sign. Hello world. I know I didn't spell that correctly, but it doesn't matter. Percent sign, percent sign, percent sign. Scroll up again. Bracket, bracket, bracket. Command S. Close it. Rename it back to MP3. Let's hear what we got. Welcome to the future. We've added a bunch more little hiccups there that have that nice compression squeak that we like. Of course, more drastic changes of the file are going to lead to more drastic changes of the audio. Next, I'm going to do something that isn't data moshing of audio, but it's using Audacity to data mosh an image. I have this image of cherry blossoms here that I'm going to open up with Audacity. It's very important to see I have a JPEG file of this, but I'm going to try to data mosh the BMP file, the bitmap file. What I'm about to do works best with bitmap files and TIFF files. It does not work terribly well with JPEGs, PNGs, or GIFs, or GIFs, depending on how you pronounce it. Go to Audacity, File, Import, Raw Data. And I'm going to import that file. Now, before we played a little fast and loose with our import settings, this time let's be specific. Let's import it as an A law, big endian, and we'll do it as mono. Actually, you could do A law or U law here, but whatever you do, you have to export with the same settings. So I'm just going to do A law to remember that. Import. Here's that imported file. Because we love the sound of these things, let's just hear what it sounds like. Okay. But what we're going to do this time is let's select a whole bunch of this, but let's not select the very beginning, because again, that's where our header is. Let's select from near the beginning to the end. Now I want to go to Effect. Let's add a phaser. And I'm going to keep the wet of this relatively low, 50s. Apply. Okay, that's been applied. Close this up. Sound has changed a little bit. Let's go to Export Audio. And now I'm going to export this as other uncompressed files, raw headerless, because I don't want to write a new audio header to this. I want it to remain a bitmap. And then encoding. I used a law to bring it in. I want to use a law to send it out. And now I'll save this. Here it is. Now let's rename it back to BMP. But I have a file called that already, so we'll call it Sakura Bent. Yes. 
Let's see what we got. That looks pretty great. Original. Data bet. There are tons of effects that come with Audacity, so I encourage you to try them all. Delay and reverb can be particularly interesting. And if you're interested in this, there are tons more YouTube videos and tutorials about this online. But since we're concerned with audio, let's flip this idea. Rather than bringing an image into our audio editor, let's bring our audio into an image editor. I'm going to use Photoshop, and I know up until this point I've used entirely free software, and I apologize, but I had trouble finding a cross-platform image editor that can import raw data. There are ways to do this in GIMP, which is a free software, but it's a little bit complicated. But the important thing is we want a software that can open up a raw file. So this time, let's start with our A file. Command D. I'm going to rename the extension to RAW. Yep. Open with Adobe Photoshop. It's going to ask for some dimensions here. I'm just going to say OK to the defaults that it suggested. So we ended up with something that's not a terribly interesting image here. Let me zoom in here. But what I can now do is take my brush tool, and then I can draw something here. Okay, looking good. File, save as. It's really important here that I once again save it back out as a raw file. Let's call it future copy one. Save. I don't want to create a header or tell it what the file type is because I'm going to convert it back to the A file. OK. Back here. Whoops, back here, I should say. A, I, F. Let's hear what we got. Welcome to this miniature. That's pretty good. Welcome to this miniature. All right, let's do the same with our guitar loop. Open with Adobe Photoshop. Okay, let's draw something here. So this one was an MP3 file, so we should get some different kinds of distortion. Not completely sure what I'm doing here. All right, that's good. File, save as, tar loop copy one, and make sure we do it as a raw file. Save, nothing in the header. Rename it back to MP3. Let's see what we got. That's kind of nice, and in some ways it's more effective than when we were editing with Hex Edit. That's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Of course, these are just a few of the possibilities that exist. What's important is to understand the fundamentals. Everything in your computer is made out of numbers, data, and by opening this data with editors that are designed for a different kind of data, we can create unique and exciting sounds. Next time we'll talk a little bit more about expressive sound design and production, thinking about how we can implement these in an end product.